Hey, I wanted to give a follow-up to the unboxing video that I did last week um, with a more full review of the keyboard, the Quirky Writer, Quirky Writer uh, 17,000 or whatever number they put on with it. I think it's the two, actually. In any case, um, I have some good and bad. I have, you know, some very mixed feelings about it, so I wanted to put those out. Um, I'm not going to do any close-ups of the keyboard. I mean, you know, here it is again, but it's not... It's just, you can find pictures on the internet, so there's really no reason to do that. Um, okay, so let's talk about the good. The good is that it is fun to type on. It is, uh, you know, Cherry MX is a thing. Cherry MX Blue is a measurable thing. You know, it's got, you know, that sound to it. It's got that responsiveness to it. It's all good. Um, especially if you understand what the Cherry MX system is. Um, so that's fine. If you like clacky, you're going to like this keyboard. If you like retro or nostalgia, you're going to love this keyboard. Um, if you want to remove the nerd knobs on your 102 key keyboard and really get all the distractions out of the way, that's also really good and you're going to like that too. So those are all the things that I think this keyboard does really well and um, some of the reasons why people would buy it. Now, some of the generically less good things, they're not specific to me, but they're things that people have commented on or that people notice. First of all, the, the layout is tight. I mean, that's kind of the point, right? It's supposed to represent or, or bring you back to that Underwood, uh, you know, keyboard of an actual typewriter. So your hands are going to be closer together. You're going to have to adjust your setup to make sure that you're still comfortable in that setting. If you're used to, again, spreading out in a 102 key keyboard or even those ergonomic keyboards, this is going to be a shift. You're going to have to learn to get used to that. Um, still, the loss of the 10 key is going to bother a lot of people, I think. Um, you know, people are just used to shifting their hand over, doing a little bit of numbers, and then going right back to it. So that's going to be something that's going to, you know, catch people. Also, the missing insert key. I've heard a few people, a couple of friends of mine on Twitter have mentioned it already that if you do a lot of work with, for example, virtualization environments where that insert key or control shift insert to do control alt delete in your virtual machines, that's going to be something you're going to notice isn't there. And it's hard to get back. And that's the last generic, not lovely thing. I had a challenge reprogramming the keys to do what I wanted them to do. For example, and I recognize this is my own little hang up. I like the sense symbol, you know, uh, alt 0189, I think, you know, I, I just, I like using the sense symbol instead of doing dollar zero point, whatever. It's just a throwback. It's yeah, it's me being again, just nostalgic about things. But I had trouble getting this keyboard to do it. I've never had problems with other keyboards within the operating system or using a separate utility getting it to do it. And it's really a challenge here. So that was something. Getting an insert key on here, probably easier. It's more standard and it's not as weird as a sense symbol. But it's still something to keep in mind. Now, as far as the personal items... Um, the return bar wasn't as delightful as I'd hoped. The, you know, this thingy, I, I really hoped I was going to get into the swing of smacking it and, and getting a return, but it didn't do it. I, I did reprogram it to do something else. It just didn't become part of my normal everyday habit. Um, and the other thing, and this is the main issue, is that I was looking for air on chair level change. And, and what I mean by that is, Five, seven, even 10 years ago, Herman Miller came out with a particular style or brand of chair called the Aeron chair. And it was very ergonomic. It was completely adjustable, you know, lumbar support and all this stuff. I don't have one. I've sat in one a couple of times. But the idea is that it was so well adjusted that anybody who sat there could sort of conform it to their sitting style and sit for longer. And so developers, programmers said, you know, I can sit for an extra two, even three hours and not be distracted by aches and pains, not have to go get up and walk around. And because of those extra two, three hours, I'm being that much more productive. And they were able to justify a very expensive chair by saying, look at how much more productive, look what that's going to give me. And I was looking for that level of change here. I was looking for the keyboard to help me focus, to help me speed up my typing in some ways, to help, again, remove those nerd knobs and those distractions from me. 
I didn't get that. And that might have been a very high bar to ask for a keyboard, but that was what I was looking for, that return to just type and just focus on the typing of what you're doing. It didn't do it. I, I found myself really being conscious of how I was typing and what I was typing, and it was it wasn't slowing me down so much, but it certainly wasn't speeding me up and it wasn't any better. And at the end of the day, a keyboard that is this cost, I don't want to insult anybody, but this expensive, I don't have that kind of money lying around to, for a piece of joy, which it was. I mean, it really is. It makes me giggle every time I look at it. It is. It, it feels good, as you saw in the unboxing. It has a weight to it and it has a very particular style to it that is really fun to get into, but I don't need $300 of cute. In my office, I need things that work and, and do specific functions. So at the end of the day, at the end of the week, really, I'm gonna box this up and send it back and I appreciate everything there is about it, but it didn't end up doing what I needed, which was to somehow level up my game when it came to actually writing. So there's the review. I don't do these a lot, so I can't say that I'm, you're going to get another one anytime soon. Uh, you will probably see my son and his snarky side comments uh, occasionally from time to time. But that's, that's the review as it stands today. Thanks for joining me.